Good evening and welcome back to Byline. This is a public affairs show here at Amherst Media and it's co-sponsored with the Amherst League of Women Voters. And back by popular demand is the vice <laughs> chair of our town council, Mandy Jo Henneke, and she's here tonight in a different role. Yeah. We're going to be focusing on the committee that you are chairing, yeah. which is a very, very important committee. It is the Committee on Governance, yes. Organization, oh and legislation. Yes. That's a big portfolio. So we want to learn how things are unfolding as you're putting this committee together and as the committee is doing its work. And so uh, we had a brief conversation the other day. And so uh, let's start with organization. What are you organizing? <laughs> we're organizing ourselves in a way, but we're, we're also organizing, you know, how we operate and some part of how the town operates you know the town manager has that organizational on the executive side but we've been forming committees both for the town council and we did form an energy and um, climate action committee that will be a town committee um, to work on that because we thought that was a missing segment of our committee structure and so the Governance committee is that's one of the shorthands I use is just governance because yeah. it's long. It's the first word. It's of the, the first word. Name. We also call it the G O L committee as the abbreviation. Um, we've been which could be the goal committee. Yeah, <laughs> it's a goal committee. Um, we're looking at on the charges of committees. What do they do? And so we've been making sure they are clear, consistent, and actionable. And do we have the ones we need on the town council? And so our main function right now has been to look at what's been proposed and make sure they're they're consistent across sort of uses and clear so that a resident if they're looking at what's this committee do can read it and understand it fairly easily okay so there's a series of what i might call operational committees that are in place right now these are some of them come out of the charter yes and some of them have been developed by the council itself in order to effectively organize the work that you're going to do. Correct. And then there's going to be policy committees. Yes. And the policy committees, an example would be the Energy and Climate Change Committee. Yep. Right? So the operational committees at this point are include the Finance Committee. So Help us. Finance, and that one's out of the charter. And yep. um, the, um, what's it called? It's OCA is its abbreviation, um, so it's um, Outreach, Communications, and Appointments. Good. And there is our committee, the Governance, Organization, and Legislation Committee. There's going to be a, a new one by the time this airs, probably, called the Community Resources Committee. Okay. Um, and then there are a couple of ad hoc committees on top of that. There's a bylaw review committee per the charter, and there is a rules of procedure committee per the charter to generate and draft the council rules of operation. Okay. And so your committee, in its organizational function, which is the middle word of the yep. committee title, you're trying to bring order to the committees and how they, um, when you form a committee, various things that need to be done. So, for example, a committee has to have a charge. Yes. What else does a committee have to have? Well, so the, the charge is, and for people who don't know what a charge is, the charge Thank is, you. is what does a committee, what are they told to do? What, what are their, their, you know, sort of operational, what can they do? What, right. what do we want them to do? And so there's been... What were been, they created to do? Yeah, their, their purpose. And okay. so there's been, if you look at the current committee charges, their, their goals and why they were created, they're all over the place in terms of structure. And so it's really hard to say, to look at something and say, where the, where's the membership in that? You, you, you can't. And so our goal in looking at all of these was to create a template, a, a document that you could put everything in so that any resident looking at them would know, here's where you'll find how many members there are, whether they're voting or not. Here's where you'll find its purpose. Here's where mm -hmm. you'll find what they are capable of doing under that purpose. Here's where you'll find, do they have to report, and who do they report to? And who appoints them. And, and also who, who appoints them. Who has the authority them. to yes. appoint them. Yeah, and how okay. long that appointment would be, yeah. <laughs> whether it's one year or three years or five, you know, how so long you'd be on it. So there's a series of boxes it. that you have to tick off 
when you're writing up a proposal to create a committee. Yes. So that when the council takes a look at it, they have the answers to the basic questions for uh, just to, in order to decide whether or not to create that committee. Yes. And what else do you see, uh, what else is involved in that? So, uh, for example, um, what about applying to for membership on the committee? Is that within your jurisdiction? That is not. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so once a committee is formed, any proposal they come back to the council would eventually end up at our committee. But for things like applications, that actually goes to a different committee, okay. depending on who the appointing authority is. But there's a process on the town website where residents can indicate their interest in committees. And so the goal of our template is to put them on every committee so people know what to expect if they want to join that committee. What is it doing? What has it done? Um, we're, we're instituting a request to our council that every committee have a reporting requirement so that the council knows what the committees are doing because many of them might not actually ever bring anything back to the council but also so that a resident can see what happened in the last year. And if you go to the town website when this system is all working properly yes. <laughs> and you click on that committee, whatever the committee is that you're interested potentially, you're, you're interested in the subject matter. Mm -hmm. So you can click on that committee and you'll be able to read the purpose of the committee, the jurisdiction of the committee, uh, how many people are going to be on the committee. Is it a council only membership? Is it uh, town? Are you, if you are on as a resident of the community, like the finance committee has a bunch of town council people who vote, but they're also going to have several people from the community who are not voting members, right. but they participate in the discussion and, and feed into that whole process. So you'll be able to go to the town website at some point, not so long from now. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> and you'll be able to, in, in addition to seeing the form that you fill out to apply for membership, you'll also be able to see a very clear outline of each committee and it'll be consistent. It'll be consistent across all the committees and that's okay. that's our goal as a as the governance committee is to make that consistent so that it's predictable. Right. Okay, so the finance committee right now is busily working on its review of the budget and all of that. Um, you're still working on this boilerplate for the committee. There's supposed to be non-voting community residents on that committee. Mm -hmm. How does that fit into what you're doing now? So that doesn't really come back to us, at least the non-residents. That would go to the Outreach Communications and Appointments Committee. Okay. Um, if we hadn't had a rules committee, a rules of procedure committee, that, that ad hoc committee that's creating rules, the process for that appointments or a recommendation would have actually come to the governance committee mm -hmm. because there's a, a slight conflict in the charter as to who appoints those non-resident members of the finance and that that sort of recommended process coming up with a recommendation yeah. was sent to the rules committee when rules dissolves when they're done their initial we've created the rules for the council that question would come to us questions of Okay. that type of procedure. So this is yeah. a very important point, which is the ad hoc rules committee and your committee and the outreach committee all have a certain amount of overlap yeah. right now, but as our government continues to be put together and things are finalized, we're going to see um, appropriate coordination among committees, but we're also going to see um, some change because, for example, you just said that the Ad Hoc Rules Committee is going to dissolve. Yes. And once the Ad Hoc Rules Committee dissolves, that puts the questions that would otherwise have gone to that committee to your committee under governance. Under the governance under portion. Under the governance. Yes. So we're going to come to governance in, in just a minute. Yeah. But to finish up on this, uh, on, the, on the committees, so you can't, you don't create committees. You... Uh, the council can propose a committee. Yeah. A person in the community could propose a committee and mm -hmm. petition the council. Yeah. What you're doing, and that's not your decision whether to create that committee or not. That's the council's decision. That's the council's yes. decision. Your work is to make sure we have an orderly, clear structure when we decide we're going to have a committee on this. 
these are the elements that the town council is going to look at to make sure that they're all there and mm -hmm. they make sense, but they will ultimately vote whether to create that committee or not and what the jurisdiction is, what the uh, purpose is, how many members, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, um, there is discussion on whether, you know, as we figure all of this out though, um, the, the recommendation to create a committee, um, the governance committee as a whole is discussing whether recommendations such as that could come from governance directly. Okay. Through our review of organization of committees, you know, that organization portion, mm -hmm. are we organized properly? Do we have a recommendation? Are we missing something? Are we not? And we're in, as a committee, discussions over multiple meetings on is that an appropriate function of our committee? Again, we're all learning. Yeah. So we're trying to figure out our scope and that's part of our discussion is, is that within our scope to review structures and actually make a proposal ourselves that to the makes, council? That kind of makes sense because any member of the council could propose a committee yes. and your committee is a group of members of the council. Yep. So a group of the members of the, of the council, independently of your committee could do that. So maybe that could also be a function of your committee. Yeah but not to the exclusion of any individual counselor no. or even the public. And, and that recommendation, us wanting to say, wanting to recommend the creation of a committee doesn't automatically create it because mm -hmm. it's ultimately the council's decision to say yay or nay to any recommendation, whether that comes from a resident, another council, or a committee if the committee decides it's within its jurisdiction to make those recommendations. Okay. Yeah. So now um, let's assume, let's fast forward. Your, um, your boilerplate is done, the council has embraced it, the system is working. Um, the ad hoc rules committee dissolved last week. Talk about governance and the role of governance as part of your committee's jurisdiction. Yes, yeah, so the governance portion is sort of the internal rules of how the council will operate. How are we going to govern ourselves? So part of that is which committees, but part of it is how do we run meetings? How do we, do we require certain above and beyond charter or legal requirements in the state, different voting requirements? Um, and how are we going to conduct ourselves at meetings? That's what rules of procedure, mm -hmm. as, as Alyssa, I'm sure, has talked about on this show, is looking at. But mm -hmm. once that is adopted, our committee will take undertake, probably yearly, a review of them to see, is this working? Is it not? Are we missing something? Are we not? The, the committee, the governance committee, is the one that's going to be sort of in charge of those reviews and then the recommendations back to a council for any changes if we see it, but if someone else recommends a change, it would then come to governance for mm -hmm. that review. So once the council adopts those final rules, yeah. the governance committee is the committee that becomes sort of the caretaker of those rules. Right. And so from time to time, you may revive, review and revise those rules by vote of the council, yeah. and it could be that the council sends a question to your committee to research and think about because it's not working quite as well as they like, or yep. the committee itself could observe that, gee, we missed something here uh, because we didn't anticipate X, Y, or Z, and now we need to propose something to the full body as to how we're going to operate. And so the rules are not just how the council is going to operate, correct? Correct. It's also how the public and the residents um, communicate with us. Too. So those rules will encompass public participation in meetings, um, things like public comment, when that happens, what an agenda looks like, how long, um, and, and just addressing ma manners of addressing each other and, and respect and things like that. So mm -hmm. it's not just internal, but it's also communication. Legislative bodies decorum. Yes. The, the, the <laughs> We're trying to avoid that body. word because it's, a, it's, it's so an archaic anti word. Well, and it also doesn't feel like Amherst. Right. But legislative bodies have to operate in a way that allows for civil uh, uh, communication and discussion and engagement, uh, even in situations that can get very hot and heavy. Yes. And yet, um, you know, you have a public responsibility to conduct that conversation in a way that brings honor to the body and reflects well upon the community, yes. uh, not to mention um, on the individual counselors who presumably 
want to put their best foot forward at all times. <laughs> yes. So, um, and, and so this will also be about how people interact with the council around um, public hearings or uh, presentation of proposals. Uh, that's not exactly the jurisdiction of your committee, is it, though, with regard to if I want to present a petition, the charter speaks to how I, as a resident of the community, can f put forward an idea through a petition. Yes. The petition then has to be received by the council. Whose job is it to uh, set the rules and the procedures and the approach? And is that starting to get us into the conversation on legislation? It is, yeah. Um yeah, the charter, as you said, sets forth some specific things. Um, our internal rules that the Rules of Procedure Committee is working on will set forth some other, you know, flesh that out a little bit more. Um, but there, then it's when it's at the council and it's not maybe ready for action or, you know, the council wants to be deliberative and thorough so they don't want to necessarily adopt something on a first time forward they mm -hmm. want to know pros and cons and and all of that where does it go and right now there really isn't a committee for that there will be when community resources is adopted there'll be a committee for some of that policy discussion and debate and all and anything financial goes to the finance committee but the governance committee is trying to figure out do we have any role, role or in that yeah. beyond what our current charge says which is we look at we would look at those measures and they would ultimately everything like that would come to us as a final look but what is that look and that's one other thing we've been discussing in the council in, in our committee is what is that look and is it a policy-based look or not or should should it be a policy-based look and at this point we are avoiding the policy-based look. Not only does our charge say no, but we're concerned about things about mm -hmm. that. So we're looking at it when it does come to us for clarity, consistency, and actionability without regard to what our own personal feelings on the actual policy presented right. is. So it's more in the nature, that function is more in the nature <clears throat> of determining whether it is, uh, whether the, the I's have been dotted and the T's have been crossed in relation to the rules of the body yep. and the uh, specific um, dictates of the charter with regard to uh, certain matters. So um, in the state legislature, we call that the committee on uh, the rules, uh, committee on uh, bills in the third reading. Mm -hmm. And basically on the third reading of the bill, it goes to that committee whose purpose it is to make sure that it's constitutionally yes. accurate. It's been drafted properly to achieve the intended outcome. Mm -hmm. If uh, you know, if, if you're supposed to be making desserts and, and and the word beef shows up, that probably is a mistake. Right. <laughs> and therefore, yeah. you're probably going to want to edit that out because you're not making. That's not a policy decision. That's a question of accuracy. Yes. If somebody says, oh, no, I'm redefining beef as a dessert, that's a different story. Yeah. But you understand what I'm saying yes. here is that this is about the accuracy and that it's complying with all other existing uh, provisions. So, for example, you could also identify, couldn't you, where it might conflict with another policy or bylaw or something like that. Yeah, actually we did, and, and we've adopted guidelines so that people can have a predictability of what we're going to be looking at things for. So actionability would be, does it conflict with a current bylaw? Does it mm -hmm. conflict with mass <coughs> general law? Does it conflict with our charter? Um, and conflicting with, say, a current bylaw is not necessarily bad, because you might be trying to change the current bylaw policy mm -hmm. in a different manner, um, but to identify that, hey, it does conflict. It creates a um, conflict and you have to resolve. And, and you have to resolve that. How you're going to do it. Are you in effect repealing the portion of the previous yep. bylaw and substituting this, or are, are you intentionally going to create this for some reason, which is not a very good idea right. <laughs> in most instances. No, for, for example, there's a current bylaw, the signed bylaw, there's it, it, sign regulations show up in two bylaws, yeah. in both the general bylaw and the zoning bylaw, and they actually conflict. So our, you know, and so it needs taken care of, yeah. obviously, but our role would be, hey, 
someone might not realize there's already something dealing with it in, say, zoning if they propose one in a general bylaw, and our role would be there's something in zoning and it doesn't, and it conflicts with that. Mm -hmm. We should, if, we're, if we like this policy, deal with that at the same time, but not say, oh, because it conflicts, we, we can't do it. Versus if it conflicts with the charter, that's a potentially different recommendation. Got it. And, um, so the legislation committee is, uh, sorry, the legislation portion of the work of your committee, you're doing the same thing that you're doing in the other two, governance and organization, where you're trying to create predictable, transparent process so yes. people know what to expect and how it's going to work. Right. And some of those things are going to be identical, whether it's something from a town department, the public, a town council, or a committee of the council. And sometimes there may be some differences in the procedure or the process, but it will be clear why. Yes. And it will be a policy decision as to why we're handling this this way versus that way and it'll be a decision of the council that yes we're going to do it that way yes okay and so now that's all about transparency and providing opportunity for engagement and clarity etc there can be surprises and things that can also get a little confusing okay let's take an example um, are there things that sometimes it's going to be unclear whether it goes to this committee or that committee and if that happens, what do we do? We haven't totally had that happen yet, but yeah, there certainly will because there will be times where there's a, a bylaw that's proposed that would clearly have financial impacts, but has a policy behind it and, you, and the council will want to know, you know what, what the pros and cons of that policy are. And then obviously it's a bylaw, so it's got legislation issues of is it even you know allowable to enact does it comport with and comply with state law and so we haven't had to deal with that on the council yet mm -hmm. but in various you know side discussions on council as we've broached this subject not like outside of council meetings but the the general feeling seems to be that it would go to all the committees and the question is do they go it does it go all at the same time or does it go one on one and we actually found you mean in sequence in sequence right. or yeah. you know does does say if it's if it's a planning related item that might have financial impact does it go to community resources at the same time that it's at finance at the same time that it's at legislation and governance committee and and we as a governance committee we tried that with the energy and climate action committee charge mm -hmm. where it was still being modified by the charge sponsors at the same time we were trying to figure out whether it was clear consistent and actionable yeah. and we decided that doesn't work very well because we never were sure what version we should be mm -hmm. looking at so, so it was in too many places at the same it time it was for that reason so we've we've sort of recommended that any any changes to policy be done before governance sees it's referred to governance for final determination because we want to see what is believed to be the final version not while policies are still changing in it because that makes it hard to determine and if there's a fiscal impact does it go to fiscal to the finance committee before governance or after so it would be before governance we want governance to be the last person to see it the question would be does it sit at finance at the same time it sits at say community resources mm -hmm. um, if it has a financial impact but is related to planning and that's something we as a council have not had an experience with yet so yeah. we're not sure but it'll probably be a trial and error can it be done at the same time or does it as we tried it with governance and legislation and drafters, does it really need separated sequentially? So if, um, if this is helpful in the state legislature, the policy committee sees the bill and makes a recommendation mm -hmm. on the bill first. Yep. If it recommends it favorably and there's a potential fiscal impact, it goes to the budget committee next okay. to determine what the amount of money is that it will cost and then if they, uh, once they decide to release it, saying we agree with the policy and we can afford it, yep. it then goes to the floor for debate. Mm -hmm. And after the debate, uh, the first debate on the floor, 
if it's approved, it moves to what would be the governance committee to check for constitutionality, proper drafting, et cetera, before the council takes, I'm sorry, before the legislature, that branch of the legislature yeah. takes the final vote. So yeah. it's the same. Th that is helpful. This is yeah. the same. The, these are the same stages that you have to figure out right. and at the state legislature. Now, the difference here is the state legislature is two. There's 160 reps. It's a lot of people running around to do a lot of work. There's yeah. 13 of you. There's only 13 of us, yes. <laughs> so you will have to take that into consideration. We only yes. have a couple of minutes okay. left. Yeah. Orphan bills. Orphan okay. bills, that's, that's the biggest discussion in governance right now. What if there isn't a standing committee on that policy? Where does it go? And right now we've been creating some ad hoc committees to deal with that. But governance, as a council. As a council. Yeah. And governance is, it, we're only 13 people and our schedules fill up in terms of trying to find right. this mix. So governance, governance committee has been discussing is there, should we have another standing committee for those that aren't covered by community resources? Does it belong in governance? And that goes back to my concern and the concern of the governance of policy versus just constitutionality in some sense, right. actionability, and we want to keep our own feelings out of and beliefs out right. of that, that and last once decision. You, and if, so we're not sure what we're going to do with that yet. If you start blurring that line, will you be able to maintain the discipline of, oh, this is to a, before of us because there's no policy committee. Yeah. When 90% of what comes before you is coming from committees that are right. policy oriented. So that's a very tricky situation. It is. It. And why we're still in discussions on governance as yeah. to what we might want to recommend to the council on that because it relates to our own charge ourselves mm -hmm. yep. of do we recommend a change or are we recommending yet another committee of the council to right. take those Which sort again, of Which again you have bills. only 13 right. people, you're part-time volunteers, you yes. paid a small stipend, you're yes. not full-time legislators so it's very challenging to stand up a new government, yes. to fly the plane while you're building it yes. which is what you're doing and you guys are working really hard at it and it's obvious and and uh, you know we wish you all very, very well. And uh, so what we've learned here very clearly is your committee, and by the way, this show is going to be broadcast probably uh, in two or three, maybe four weeks, which means some of the decisions will already have been made, yep. but our, our viewers will at least understand some of the thinking behind what you're doing. Right. But the bottom line is you're looking to create um, consistency with regard to how matters are proposed, yes. including how you create a committee, uh, all of the expectations around that, what happens if somebody files legislation, whether it's from the council or from the public, yep. and that uh, there be a clear process and transparent and people can predict and know not the outcome, but the process. Yes. So they'll yes. Uh, understand the process. Yes. The outcome is the debate between the council yes. member, among the council members and the council and the community. Yes. With that, thank you so much. Thank you. Our time goes so fast it does. here. It thank does. you so much for all your good work. Thank and you thank for you for me. joining us again tonight.